Welcome to this tutorial, the purpose of which is to show you how to make a fractal movie. First of all, we need to start with the fractal program. In this case, it's Fractal Extreme. We're in the actual software right now. So the first thing we do is go to File and New. Here, we're given a range of choices of the various different types of fractals that are available. For this purpose, we'll just use the Mandelbrot and just click OK. And here's the actual fractal itself. What we're going to do now is explore certain aspects of this fractal and find an area that we find pleasing to the eye. So we're just going to scroll into the fractal and zoom in. Use the scroll wheel on your mouse if you have one. And if we start from this point here. So at this point, we'll just keep exploring. If you want to find out what it looks like in full screen, just expand it at the top. Keep going further and further into the fractal. We can move it. <coughs> Sorry about the voice. <coughs> I have a chest infection at the moment. And excuse the magnifier as well, because without it I can't see a damn thing. And just keep doing this until you find an area that you really like. And I quite like this bit here. So we'll leave it at that. What we're going to do now is all these zooms that we've done with the mouse, we're now going to render them and make a zoom movie. So we'll just go up to the top here where it says render and make zoom movie. We're going to give it a name. We'll call it uh, moving one, why not? And we'll save that on the desktop. The software is now rendering the zoom that we did from the beginning. It's a fairly quick program, which is really good. The good thing is, is you don't have to know anything about mathematics or fractals to do this. It's fairly simple and fairly straightforward. As an alternative to using it as a movie making tool, you can also save these fractals as PNGs or bitmaps, which you can then transfer into PaintShop Pro and manipulate them however you wish. Just about there now. Okay, and there are further options you can add. You can actually cycle uh, the colors so that they will change as the uh, zoom progresses just by clicking on this little box here, and you'll see the colors changing now. But that's an option you might want, you might not, so I'll just disable it for the time being. And when you're happy with what you see, then we can just save the file, click File. And then save as AVI movie or PNG, or you can go down and actually save it as a bitmap if that's what you want to do. So we'll save it as an AVI. And again, you're given certain options. And in this particular instance, how many frames per zoom? So 25 frames for every zoom that you do, which makes it nice and smooth if you're doing 25 frames per second, which is the Sort of standard movie 24 25 frames a second output width is important in this instance what we're going to do is we're going to give it the hd quality which is 1920 by 1080 pixels so 1920 width by 1080 height and that will give you the best HD quality you can get. So zooms per second, you can alter that if you wish. So quite happy with that. So 
So we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll click OK. So now it's rendering the actual movie to a perfect movie file that you can use in Corel Video Studio Core or any other editor software that you might happen to have. There are other video editors available on the internet which are totally free of charge. So you could use those if you if you haven't got Coral Video Studio. But the whole process is exactly the same, whichever editor that you use. So from a rendering point of view, it's a pretty fast program because rendering this number of pixels um, on such a large scale usually takes quite a length of time. But uh, even if you have a slow computer, it's still pretty fast. Mine is fairly slow, but yours, you might find this might just take a few seconds. So I'll just put the cat on, make yourself a nice cup of coffee, and this should be ready in a couple of minutes. When we come to render this in Coral Video Studio as a final finished movie, then again, it takes a few minutes for the whole movie to render. So um, when we get to that stage, I'll, I'll speed that process up so you're not having to sit around and just wait until the whole thing renders. There you are, it's complete now, so exit from there. I will leave the program completely. And go to the next stage. Next stage is to open Video Studio Pro and there we are. So now that we have a movie we can now take the timeline which runs along from left to right here and you've got various different timelines you can add lots of different clips for overlays. I've set it up as one, two, three, four movie uh, timelines you also have a one for text overlays. You've got microphone there if you want to do a commentary as you're doing your movie. You've got audio files you can insert. And we'll come to that in a second. So I'm going to start on the, the second track because I don't want this to be the background layer. I want this to be an overlay on top of the background layer. So we'll just right click on the timeline and then where it says insert video. We'll go back to desktop and we'll find the movie we just made. And there it is there. Fractal movie. Open. And that will then bring that into Coral Video Studio. Now then, one interesting point is it's only the bottom background layer, which is this this is where it gets a bit complicated because in PaintShop Pro your background layer is at the bottom and your overlays go up to the top. This works in reverse. Your background layer is at the top and your overlays go the opposite way down to the bottom. So the background is the top timeline. Hence we're putting this on the second timeline as an overlay. And when it does that, um, it actually reverts to this size. But we can change that to fit the whole screen by right clicking and sorry ignore that double clicking <laughs> and we go to alignment options click on alignment options and fit to screen so this is the size of the project that we're working on and if we click along here on this little icon where the arrows point left and right if we click on that that will take us to the end of the timeline and show us exactly how long this movie will last. And if we check up the top here on this timeline here and click project as opposed to clip, it will tell us when we get to the end. So if we move the, uh, the scroll on to the end.
This is the problem when you use a magnifier, you can't see what the hell you're doing. But we're getting there. Right, this is where we want to be. So it's approximately 28 seconds long. So that will do uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. So we'll go back to the beginning. And now, <coughs> excuse me, this is our overlay track. I'm now going to put some background footage in there. So I'll right click on the top timeline, insert video, and you, you can insert a photograph or insert a video. It's entirely up to yourself what you want to use as background. But I'm going to go into uh, libraries, videos, and I'll find here's the one I use quite often, just an abstract uh, bit of footage. I'll just insert that one. And that should be fine. I'll just move that. So I'll shorten that clip. I don't want it to be too long. I'll then right click again and insert another one. Uh, a bit of variety. Move these swirls, I think. Again. I just click to the end to see where the uh, timeline ends. So I'll shorten this just by click with the left mouse, click and then drag. I shorten that clip and then I'll right click again, insert another bit of video footage or another picture. It's entirely up to yourself. So this one looks quite interesting. <clears throat> and a lot of these things you can get on YouTube anyway. And I'll just shorten. This part of the movie to match that part by clicking and dragging. So they all finish now at that point in the movie. Now here's the interesting part. The top timeline is your background layer. The fractal movie that we did is the overlay. Now if we double click that, we now have another option which is mask and chroma key. We're going to use the chroma key or what we call green screen or blue screen option. It doesn't have to be blue or green. Apply and overlay. And here, you can use the ink dropper to choose whatever color you want to become transparent. So if I click on the, the blue section, which is already highlighted, all the areas of blue on your fractal movie are now transparent. And the background layer will show through. If I click on the green section, which is the bottom right part here, you'll see it changes completely. And that applies to any part of your movie. If we take out the purple red, again it changes again. So in this instance, let's do the blue. Okay, and we'll leave it at that. Now you can, at any stage, uh, either on the background layer, which is the top one, or on the overlays, and you can have up to as many as you wish. Um, but I'm just using the one layer for this fractal. But you could, if you wanted to, just by right clicking, go to the top and copy that bit of footage and then put it on the next timeline. And just for more variety, what we can do is we can, um, let's just change some of the colors. We'll go to the effects, which is on the effects key there. You now do a kaleidoscope, we can invert the colors. We'll just click on invert. Come down to the bottom. And now you see the colors have inverted completely. Again, if we double click on this section, we can Use the chroma key and choose the blue, which now appears as green, yellow on there, and get rid of that section. Or we can use the black. So it's entirely up to yourself. But in this instance, I'm just going to get rid of that. So I'm going to delete it and just use the one there. 
but there's a range of multitude of effects here that you can use um, to make it even more interesting and uh, more random basically. So now that we've chosen that, um, we'll add some music or background effects, when I tell you what you want to do. We'll insert audio and we'll insert that to the music track. Go to libraries and in this instance we'll have uh, music. There's lots of uh, music you can get from the Facebook audio library or the YouTube audio library <coughs> that you can use as um, audio background. In my in particular instance, I usually uh, make make them myself with uh, software. And these are some of the ones I've made in the past. Again, fairly simple, easy to do. Again, click to the end to see how far the track goes. Click, left click, and then drag to the end of the timeline. And now, if we just click again, the music ends exactly at the end of the video. If you want that music to fade out at the end, then just right click on the audio track and You'll be given the option of fade in, fade out, adjust volume, etc. So just fade out, and the music will fade out at the end. <clears throat> and basically, that's it. That's your movie. So click on here to enlarge the screen, full view. Click on project, go to the beginning, and then play. <laughs> What I'm going to do now is just check the chroma key again for the overlay track and it's set to blue. So what I think I'll do this time, I think I'll just set it to black. I'll just move the track to the end. In this black section we want to be transparent. So we're going to click on the black section. Okay. Now let's change it completely. So I'll just run that through for you. Back to the beginning. That's much better. Okay. What was that? Go back to the beginning, click on project, and then we'll have the music this time. <clears throat> with the music, you're happy with the overlay tracks, the background videos or the background uh, images that you're going to use, simply go to the top where it says share and we're now going to render that movie as a finished movie. So what we're looking for is an MPEG-4 which is your high quality HD and it's going to be 1920 by 1080 at 25 frames per second. We'll give it a name and we'll call this John Movie One and then start. 
what I'll do as it's rendering now, because this is going to take a few minutes, I'll fast forward this so that you're not having to wait until the whole movie renders. But it will take about probably five to ten minutes on a movie of this size. If you're doing a really long movie, it will take considerably longer. But be patient and you'll end with a decent result. Here we are then, we've now produced our first fractal video. So we'll close the program down. And we'll take a look. So John Movie 1, double click and play. This whole process should take no longer than half an hour to one hour, depending on your skill level. Thanks for watching.